Well, good morning. Good morning, Randy. Good morning. Good morning, David. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, everybody online as well. We're going to start in the Red Book this morning to page 13. Page 13 in the Red Book, Wonderful Words of Life. to the garden alone, page 26, in the garden, in the book. Page 26. 26B, there is a fountain. Thank you. Well, we are going to start on page 26. We're going to see 160 later. Bids me go through the void 
Because it is a new year, I wanted to uh, talk to you this morning about making some wise choices this new year. Um, we all have choices to make every day of our lives, and uh, you know, in the new year, we think about those choices, and if there's some choices that we can make different than we made last year. Uh, and uh, start out the new year, fresh start, and, and trying to, to do some things right. So I want I want to talk to you um, this morning. Um, Israel, you know, often made bad choices, and uh, they made some good choices too. Um, and I want to talk to you about uh, a decision that they made the first time that they didn't make very well. And the second time around, they were given another chance to do better. So, in Numbers uh, 13 to 14 chapter, the people were about ready to enter into the promised land. The Lord had brought them to the, to the borders, and God was going to send them in, and he sent 40 of the spies in. Um, and uh, I mean, he sent 12 spies in. <laughs> 12 spies in for 40 days. And uh, after, after the 40 days, uh, they came back, and, and 10 of them gave a bad report, and two of them gave a good report. It says they came back to Moses and Aaron, the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. And there they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. And they gave Moses this account. We went into this land, which you sent to us, and it does uh, flow with milk and honey, and here is the fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and their cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites. They all live in the hill country, and the Canaanites, they live near the sea along the Jordan. Then Caleb, then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we certainly can do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack these people. They're stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they had explored, and they said, the land we explored devours those who are living in it. And all the people that we saw there were of great size. We saw the Nephilim. They're the descendants of Enoch that came from the Nephilim. And we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. So Numbers 13 and 14 is definitely one of those woulda, coulda, shoulda moments for Israel, we have those moments where we pass by opportunities and they just, they weren't thinking with their heads uh, in this moment. It should have unfolded very differently than it did. You know, God had brought them out of Egypt. He, he performed all these miraculous 
uh, sights before them. In fact, every day they were experiencing miracles because God was raining manna from the sky. He was leading them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire at night. And constantly just bringing them water in the desert. I mean, we're talking, you know, over a million people. And this, <laughs> these constant miracles, they saw the ten flags. You know, they were witnesses to all of that. And just so many things that God had shown them. You would think by now that they know that God can do it. I mean, God says, I'm going to do something, that he's going to do it. You know, and to believe and have faith that this is going to happen. Um, so, you know, God said he was going to give them the land. It was already theirs. God had promised David. And yet they were still stuck on that one word. We cannot do it. Yeah. And they told the truth. Yeah. They could not do it. Right. <laughs> without God, they can't. Right. Yeah. Just like we can't without God. But with yeah. God, you know, we can do all things. So, you know, God had, God had taken them through this journey. And he was... He was molding them and remaking them and you know there's deserts there's desert experiences in our life where God takes us through some desert experience because he wants to teach us something you know where God is leading you in that situation to mold you and reshape you and then there's desert experiences that we experience that we experience because we're disobedient to God you know and so he's saying, oh, you're going to be disciplined in this way because, you know, you didn't do what I asked you to do, and now you're going to learn some discipline. Jerry. Well, I mean, uh, what uh, the Israelites, for the most part, are lacking throughout the years is faith. Yeah. I mean, if you remember the faith of Abraham, he was promised by God that to his son, that uh, you know the whole world was going to uh, be blessed. Right. And yet God told him to take out his knife and kill him. Mm -hmm. So he was going to do it. So he had the faith that God's promises were going to come true. Right. And we always have Satan climbing into our heads mm -hmm. whenever he can, trying to destroy our faith. And that's what happens to the Israelites. I mean, They've got the same adversary attacking them that we have attacking them today. And it's sure. It's yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, and his schemes have not changed very much. You know, <laughs> throws the throws the same things at us that he threw at them. And uh, I guess he figured if it's worked for thousands of years, it's going to keep working because people listen to it. But and uh, then in chapter fourteen. Starting with verse 1, it says, That night all the members of the community, they raised their voices and they wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land just to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and our children are going to be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron, they fell down in front of the whole assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes. And they said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land that we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and he will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. So do not be afraid of them. So, yeah, what everyone was saying, you know, there's two, there's two ways of looking at our situations. You know, we can look at it from an earthly perspective, or we can look at it from a heavenly perspective. And when we look at it with an earthly uh, perspective, like David was saying, that, you know, this can, is this something that I can do? Well, most of the time, no, you can't if God's not behind it. Um, so, you know, their earthly perspective is there's giants in the land. 
and their and their walls are too big and too thick, and we never be able to penetrate them. And uh, so you know they get caught up in fear and panic, and and then they get angry, and they want to uh, persecute their leaders. They want to stone their leaders. They want to go back to slavery. Uh, you start you don't you don't make any sense. When you, when you start giving in to unbelief and you lose your faith, you start making choices that don't make any sense. Why would you want to go back to slavery again? Why would you want to experience all that misery when God has done so much to bring you this far, you know? So, and when people start grumbling and complaining, it's very contagious. I don't know if you've ever been around it very much, but it can just sweep like a plague. And, uh, so once people start grumbling, you know, then everybody in Israel starts grumbling and everybody um, catches that. And so it's just amazing to see and we think about them and we think, well, how foolish are they? But we do it all the time, you know. Uh, we, God has shown us so many miracles in our own lives, you know, and yet we still make foolish uh, choices. And uh, we, we should have learned by now, you know, that God is, God is with us. He's, he's right there. And nothing is too big, you know, for us to conquer when he's behind us. So they give in to fear and unbelief, but they're, they're, they're really attacking God, even though, you know, they're wanting to stone the leaders. We get some insight in this in Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 27. Uh, Moses quotes them saying it is because the Lord hates us that he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. So that's their logic that God hates us so he's brought us out of Egypt to come to this land and be destroyed by these guys. <laughs> so they totally have just lost their faith, you know. They're thinking that God hates them and wants to destroy them. I mean, it's just, I mean, it just seems unreal, you know, that they could have had that kind of mindset, you know. And so this can happen if we start getting into fear and start being consumed, you know, by, by deceit and lies of the enemy. Um, because that's going to happen. So they said they were like grasshoppers compared to these giants. But, you know... God was in control, and there's nothing that God can't do. And two of the guys actually came back with a good report. They were the only ones that actually got to go into the promised land because they believed in the promise, and they did have the faith. So out of all the people, they still, after the 40 years, they were still alive. And I think God just gave them vitality, uh, extra vitality, because uh, by the time that they go into the land, Caleb is, he's over 80 years old, and he's, he's, he goes into the promised land, and he's conquering all this land, and he's, he's like in his 20s still, you know, he's just got all this strength and energy at 85 or whatever it was, you know, and uh, I think it, God just gave them, preserved their life and gave them extra blessings so that by the time the four years was over, that they could go in and, and really enjoy this promised land because they had faith. But sometimes, you know, you have to um, reap the consequences of somebody else's sins around you. You know, if you're a family member, somebody in your family sins in some way, you're, you, you reap the consequences sometimes of those sins and mistakes that, that people uh, have made in your life. You know, when you were in school and somebody acted up, in the classroom, you know, then the teacher punished the whole class. Uh, <laughs> you know, even though you didn't do anything, you were doing exactly what the teacher told you to do, but you you were punished anyway because somebody was making a mess. So anyway, those kinds of things happen. So so Caleb and Joshua, you know, they had to, along with the rest of Israel, suffer for 40 years, but they were given the blessing to continue and to go into uh, to go into the promised land, and this is kind of like uh, you know the story of, of David and Goliath. You know when when David and Goliath when that story happened, you know everybody was fearing Goliath. They saw all these Philistines and especially Goliath out there, this huge giant, 
It's a very similar story. This huge giant, there's no way we can conquer this giant. We're like grasshoppers to them. And uh, so even all of Israel feared Goliath, even King Saul. But here comes little David, and he had the face, you know, that God could do it because he realized, you know, what you guys were saying, that it's, it's not about him. It's about God. He's the one that's going to, he's the one that's going to win this battle. And so in the, in the beginning of chapter 13 of Numbers, God says, um, the Lord said, send some men to explore the land which I am giving to the Israelites. So he, he already had promised, this is, uh, this is a given. I've given it to you. You know, it's a done deal. No, we haven't crossed the Jordan yet. It is, it is a done deal. So they made a mistake the first time, you know, and our choices have consequences and their choices had consequences 40 years and uh, the Lord said, um, as surely as I live, I will do to you the very things I heard you say, for I, the Lord, have spoken. You will all die here in the wilderness because you complained against me. And none of you who are 20 years old or older and were counted in the census will enter the land that I swore to give you. The only exceptions will be Caleb, and uh, a son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. And because the men who explored the land were there for 40 days, you must wander in the desert for 40 years. A year for each day, suffering the consequences of your own sins. Now Paul, in the book of 1 Corinthians, he points out this story in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And he uh, recounts some of these events and he says, These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us. That's why these stories are in the Bible. You know, the Old Testament isn't to be ignored. Paul's referencing the story in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and he's saying these things happened to these Israelites, these mistakes, these sins that they made, they're for us. They're written down for us as warnings for us. So, if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. So, this, this, is, this is something that we need to heed this warning and not make the same mistakes, you know, that they made. Not to fall into to unbelief. And um, when it comes to our circumstances, you know, just having the faith to believe that God can get us through it. So, this first, this first story didn't end well. And the scripture says, this is a warning, don't be like them. Don't follow into their footsteps. Or you might be wandering in your own personal desert and not into your, your promised land of blessings that God wants to give you because you're not trusting him. And I really do believe that God withholds blessings in our life because we don't trust him. Amen. We're not walking in the spirit. We're not walking according to obedience that God's required of us. We could have a much better life if we would be willing to do that. So there are there are consequences, but we can make the right choice. So after 40 years go by, they made the right choice this time. Um, Moses stood before them the second time around, and he says, "Now listen. Today I'm giving you a choice between prosperity and disaster, between life and death." I have commanded you today to love the Lord your God and to keep his commands, laws, and regulations by walking in all his ways. And if you do this, you will live and you will become a great nation. And the Lord your God will bless you and the land that you're about to enter and occupy. But if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, if you're drawn away, to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live a long, good life in the land you're crossing the Jordan to occupy. Today I've given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Oh, that you would choose life that you and your descendants might live. 
Choose to love the Lord your God and to obey him and commit yourself to him, for he is your life. So he reiterates, you know, this, this situation again. And basically they have the same, the same choices that they had 40 years ago. And, and Moses is encouraging them to choose life. Choose between life and death. You want uh, your life to be all full of sin and consequences and, and just sorrow? Or do you want to live in the land of blessing and for God to really just enrich your life the more you walk in the Spirit? Terry? What I think is kind of ironic is Moses said all this to the people, but he himself wasn't allowed to. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. That's because he, that's because he, got, he sinned too. Yeah. He sinned and he wasn't allowed to go in. So, and that, that that's a good story for us to just realize God doesn't play favorites. You know, if anybody was favorite, it would have been Moses. But because he too was disobedient, he didn't get in either. Yeah, so, you know, this, God's warnings, he means them, you know, it's for everybody. So, and then we, you know, and then we learned uh, a few weeks back when we were starting the book of Joshua that, you know, Joshua, because Moses didn't get in, you know, Joshua took his place and he was the one that actually brought the people in. And what did he tell them? He said, be strong and courageous. God told him that and he told the people that. We need to be strong and courageous. God's with us. He's behind us. You know, we can do this. He's promised to give it to us. Why would we doubt? Why would we fall into fear? You know, God wants to do that. So I just want you to reflect on that this morning because, you know, yeah, it's about faith. Those things happen to, to Israel as a warning for us. We have choices just like they do. You know, we can live in our land of promise that God wants to give us this a life full of blessings, or, you know, we can stay in the desert and wander the rest of our lives because we keep living in disobedience. So we have every day, we have choices, you know, that, that confront us. And God wants us to cross the Jordan. He wants us to go get into that life where he's going to help us to face those giants, whatever those giants may be, you know, to, to not fear them, but to face them. And to know that God is, you know, he's behind us and he's going to help us work through those kinds of situations. So if we believe in his pre pre you know, presence in our life, that his Holy Spirit's with us, we've got the counsel of his word. God also speaks to us in our, in our prayers. But, you know, every, every day is a pivotal moment in our life. How, if I, am I going to seize this day and give it to God and... And, you know, just really reap the benefits of this day? Or am I going to squander it or do something I shouldn't be doing or whatever it is? You know, that each day counts. And, and especially going into this new year, 2022, you know, we've had a couple rough years. And, you know, we need to really, we don't know what's coming next. So we need to be prepared spiritually you know, for those things. And if we really get in the Word and a prayer time and, you know, really getting counseled by the Lord, then whatever comes and hits us next, you know, we'll be ready for it instead of being knocked over because, you know, we're just spiritually, we're not where we need to be. And then when the devil comes in our head, like somebody was saying, Jerry, I think it was, that, you know, we give in to that, you know, because... We haven't been connected with the Spirit like we need to be. We haven't been in the Word like we need to be. And so we make those bad choices. So I want to really encourage you this new year, you know, to, to step out in faith and make some, make some changes, you know, make some changes in your, especially in your devotions and your spiritual life, you know, that look back at what you did this year, you know. What did you accomplish spiritually with the Lord? And how are you going to change that? Are you just going to keep going in the same pattern that you've been going in? Or are you going to really make some changes to, you know, really connect with where God's at? Uh, not only in your life personally, but where God is at in this world, how he's working, and how you can get involved to be a part of that. So that's what God wants for us. So I just want you to be thinking about that this coming year, because um, I know we all 
to be better. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for uh, the, this story, this reminder of, of Israel the first time around, how they didn't make the right choices. And they were had to suffer through the consequences of those of those choices, Lord. They were given an opportunity and they didn't take it. But then after 40 years, they were given the opportunity again. And this time they listened to your voice. They had the faith to go in. They they listened to your instructions and they, they obeyed implicitly. They were just totally on board and and it was a it was a new generation. It was their kids. They had learned from their parents' mistakes. And so, Lord, help us to, when we see circumstances, when we see obstacles in our pathway, Lord, that we don't, we aren't given into fear and defeat. But, Lord, we know that we can conquer, we can be victorious through anything in this life. And, but we just need to have faith and trust in you that you're going to work them out. So, Lord, help us to be strong and courageous this coming new year. That we can just really believe in the promises that you've given us and to be a people of faith. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.